you've met Jurgen Klopp, haven't you? Yeah, I've met him in Cape Town. It was it was really cool. It was, you know, I'm a fan. Like I, I don't, um, I play rugby, and you know, a couple of people recognize me every now and then. But like when I see, um, when I see people I watch uh, like soccer or whatever sport, I freak out. Like sometimes when people see me somewhere, I freak out the same. Like Jorgen walked in, I was sitting um, with some of my friends uh, and my wife. We were sitting at the table. And we're talking and he walked in, like my jaw dropped. And I just walked, I looked at him, went to the bathroom. So I tell my friend, he plays cricket. He plays for, so he was the, the pro tiers captain. He knows nothing about football. He only knows uh, David Beckham. That's his favorite soccer player. Yeah. So I'm like, you see who that was? He's like, no, I'm like, it's Jürgen Klopp. He's like, who's you? I'm like the Liverpool uh, coach. I'm like, okay, just leave it. I'll get up. He was in the bathroom. I, I stand outside the bathroom, I'm waiting there for my the restaurant. And I don't know, I'm like, how do I ask him? So I know uh, one of his agents, uh, uh, his name is Mike, he used to work at Adidas. So I call him as he walks out. I'm like, Mike, yes, Jürgen, talk to you. Because I panicked, he came on. So he took the phone and he spoke in German. And then he, he's like, dude, you could have just asked me. I know who you are. We watched you just before the final because some of, obviously, some of the, the English soccer players were watching England. On the day, and then we we say he came to sit with, with us in the table. We spoke for for forty minutes. He brought his whole table to us. He invited me to Liverpool. Booked my tickets. Two weeks later, I was there and I went to go watch the game. And then I was. They took me down. I met all the players, and I've got. I've I've been. I'm good friends with Jordan Hennessy now. I've spoken to him since then. Then I've, we went to go play in Italy <laughs> against Benetton this year, and. I booked my ticket so I could go because we're off the next week. So I went straight to 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 watch the it was was it the FA Cup, the well whatever trophy it was we just won at Wembley. So Jordan gave me tickets. I went there, sitting in the crowd, singing, going crazy. There's a couple of videos of me going crazy. <laughs> oh how good! <laughs> That's class. Yeah, I think the most starstruck I got was meeting the Big Show. In wrestling. No man, where did you meet the big show? <laughs> so for London Irish, for London Irish, when my first rugby came, we had to do this thing with Seamus because he was obviously he's Irish, so we were doing this like uh, commercial thing for it, like joining rugby up with the wrestling. And at the time, he was having this big rivalry with this, is like back in 2018, and he was in this big rivalry with the Big Show, and we were going to accompany him, like chaperone him into the ring. It was like me, Corbs. Oh, it was Tangy Thackenbau. So Lossie was there as well, bro. Oh, Lossie. Yeah, Lossie was there. Yeah. And then um, <laughs> and we, we chaperoned him in. But then bef just before, you're like in the backstage and you're like shaking hands with like Coffee Kingston. And then I met the big show and I was like, he really is the big show. He is so <laughs> massive. Yeah. Bro, you know, like when you shake a man's hand. Then it like, covers. Yeah, yeah, bro. It was like this bit of his hand was like three of mine. So I could only shake the bottom of his hand. Like that. It yeah. was so ridiculous how big he was, man. Yeah, he was, and he that's was such a lovely feel, guy. That's how I feel every time I shake, like, Eben's hand or, like, some of my teammates, man. I, like, I wake up, like, how are we the same age or how am I older than you? They're so big, bro. And you know, the um, worst is when I play against them. Oh, I trained yeah. against Eben, and I remember, I will never forget, because Ches and Kobe was injured. We were all playing with the Stormers. And we had like full contact. And I don't like full contact in training. And he even got the ball. We well, we so tight. We like we we like best besties. He gets the ball, but he looks at me and I know that look. He looks at me and I knew he was oh. coming. He went on top of me. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get him, I'm gonna get him. Then he came the second time. All I could hear was Chelsea and Kobe laughing. I was so angry, I chased him because he wasn't training that day. I was angry, I chased him. And I'm like, I, bro, I sit there, I'm like, how, like, where do I tackle you? You know, obviously it's a training, it's so hard. The guys are so big. Is um <laughs> is Eben like a full guru in, full, in contact then in training as no, well? No, not always. Yeah, sometimes, day, want, sometimes he's feeling, he feeling spicy. Him, yeah. he, he came in hot that day. And and then after he wants to talk to me, but I'm like, I oh, know, I'm sad. Like, why would you do that to nah. your friend? Like, you're my mate. Like, why would you... <laughs> You betrayed me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, That's yeah. sad. Sad. I was so sad, man. I was emotional. It took me it took a couple of days for me to get over it. Uh, would you Would you ever think of uh, 
you know, at some point coming over and playing playing in Europe? If so, where do you where where would you like to to kind of run around? I've 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 thought I've thought a lot about it, um, but um, yes, um, my, like I don't know. I would miss South Africa too much. Uh, number one, because I think. Um, with everything, you know, we I know we're a third world country, we have got so many struggles, but I still think it's the greatest country in the world. And um and and like there's so much that I love here in South Africa. And yeah, in my family, you know, I've got a young family settling down, you know, and I've been moved I've moved now from from Cape Town to Durban. So um yeah, but I, I in the past I did once I was talking to a club, I think after 2015. I was talking to um, Toulouse then, uh, before Chesney went, or the similar time. But since then, I don't know. And I'm, I'm not getting any younger now, so I'm not sure if I, would, uh, if I would go to Europe. If I ever leave, I think I would go to Japan. I can't, I can't leave this hard rugby to another hard rugby. Like, the physical-wise, I'm not saying it's not easy. It's easy in Japan. I'm saying physically, it's, your, my body is taking a lot. Talking about your uh, teammates in the Springbok camp, you've got some incredible players. Uh, and then alongside you at the Celsi Sharks and for the Springboks, no more so, uh, Makazeli Mapimpi, M- M- a man who you know very well, who seems to score against everyone that he plays against, he scored at the weekend, and, and he scores against, in every, against every country he plays against. No, he's... I mean, that guy is like one of the most inspirational human beings I've ever seen. You know, he comes from... We come from, like... It's like I don't I can't I thought I struggled or I thought I, like my story was tough, you know. It's always like that until you meet someone else, you know. And he got his break late, you know. He had to work he had to work really hard um for, for it. And he went through he's I think he's the only player who anyone who's been born um after nineteen ninety one who made it through without going to a model C school. Uh or yeah. And he made it through the hard way, and the things that he does. And I think he's not even we haven't even seen his best yet. You know, he's really good. He's an amazing human being. You know, and I'm like I'm I'm so inspired because I learned English when I was 13 for the first time. He's learning English as he's going through. You know, and we do the calls. He couldn't speak English at all. You know, and and now you know he he is giving input in in in, in the team environment it's it's really amazing because he's had to work for everything basically yeah it's funny because we had when we had Brian Habana on here he described a very similar thing where he's like you you don't think you've had things tough and then you and then he he said then you hear of what you know Sia's done and and what Makazeli have done and he used those as examples and it's funny you would say the same thing about uh, yeah. the, t- the toughness of M- Mpimpi's uh, upbringing. But, but you've also had a very, very difficult time uh, in your childhood. Um, yeah, we, like, the way we live and the way we grew up it, it is, um, it's not a, it's a normal thing in our country. Like there, there's too many stories like mine, you know? And, and that's why I, I did my book because we draw strength from all the struggles and the battles that we face, you know, and I think one thing that I love the most is Coach Rassi. Like, he recognized that and he knew who we are, you know, not just as rugby players, but our stories, where, what it took for us to get here, you know, and, you know, as you can see in Chasing the Sun, where he speaks about, like, this is why I chose you. I chose you because of that struggle, because I know when you get to that deep place or when you get to that dark place where it's battle. I know you're gonna you're not gonna back out because you know you're not gonna lose because you're gonna back out you're gonna lose maybe because it just doesn't go your way but you will stay you will stay in the fight 